Hi guys and welcome back to the Auto Finesse Detailing Academy where today we're embarking on another of our big details. This time it's this, our latest project car, another Mark 1 Caddy dubbed the Caddy V2. So some of our followers that have been with us for a while would have already caught some glimpses of this on socials. Those that have been with us longer will probably remember when we picked this up as just a standard white truck about five years ago. Well, this has been a bit of a side of the workshop project for us. Never really caught any pace until just recently. The last few months, as you can see, things have progressed a little bit. We have spent absolutely hours on this truck. The shell has gone all the way back down from underside, arches, every nook and cranny has been restored, repainted in this beautiful Porsche crayon color. It's now rocking a two litre 16 valve ABF on bodies and without our friend, Neil Meliardin, put some pinstriping down the side already. All that's really left for us to do is the final touches, like door handles, wing mirrors, putting the interior in, and a few other trim pieces. But before we do that, we're gonna get on with what we do best, which is detailing it. So let's get stuck into it. First thing we're doing here is giving the car a wipe down. We're not going to go outside and do the traditional wash. The car's not dirty, it's never been on the road, it's just a little bit dusty from sitting around the workshop. So a bit of finale quick detailer, plenty of cloths, we'll keep switching these out and we'll get the standing dirt off of the vehicle using this. Now this could potentially put the odd bit of marring in, however we're machine polishing the car so anything we put in we're more than going to take out with the paint correction stages that will follow. <laughs>
So after inspecting the paintwork, we started to test out some different polish and pad combos to see how we could get our desired result. Whilst this is fresh paint, by no means was this a big show car paint job. A friend of ours done this for us in his barn whilst he was on furlough just to keep him busy. To be honest with you, he's done a lovely job. Now, don't get us wrong, it's not the level of our Chevy, but it didn't just not cost as much as that, it didn't take as much time as that. So we're gonna make the best of it. There's a few pigtails and stuff in there from where it's been wet flatted after, which we're gonna try and take care of. And there's a few other areas where it's just got marred up and some swirls from sitting around in workshops and things inevitably being put on it or the vehicle getting rubbed against. This paint has managed to cure super, super hard. Now, it was ovened well, I know that. It's also sat around for a little while and we even rolled the shell out in the sunlight when it was summer to help UV cure it a little bit. Have we done ourselves some favors? Yes and no. The paint's nice and hard and it's not marring and marking every time we correct it, but it's super hard to get the marks out of that are already in there. So we're gonna keep on sweating on it and try and get this looking a little bit more like one of our show trucks.
way around the car, Simon's done a lot of the interior paintwork because we've got a lot of exposed paint going on in the cab of this car. He's also gone around the engine bay and glossed up any paint there. There was a couple of dry edges that we needed to sort out. Myself and Darren have attacked that side, the majority of the roof, and we're working our way down this side now. The wing and the door's been done halfway. We've still got to do the pinstriping just to gloss that up. We don't actually do paint correction there. But we've come across something that's probably gonna need a little bit more than just machine polishing. And that's this area here and this lower piece. Now, I'm led to believe the whole car was painted at the same time, but I feel that this wasn't fully wet flatted as well as some of the other areas were when the car was done. So what we're gonna do, we've got this kind of motley texture here. We're gonna work on that. We're actually gonna block sand this out or color sand it, if you will. Um, we're gonna color sand this area out, get that surface nice and flat before polishing it back up, just so it matches up nicely to the rest of the car. So with the 1500 work done, I've sanded this area and then I've squeegeed it off to check for any low points. You can see up the top, I've kept well away from the edges. You need to keep away from the edges when you're sanding. Reason being is, it's very, very easy to go through up here. And to be honest with you, when this is done, you're not really gonna notice that little fingernail edge that we're leaving up there. It will blend in quite nicely and won't be that noticeable. I'm happy that we've got to the bottom of the texture now, so I'm just gonna follow that up with a finer grade. This is basically to remove the scratches that we've just put in from the 1500 and refine those down a bit. Then we'll do the same again, but with a 3000 disc on an air sander, and then it should be flat, it will be matte, but then it will be ready for polishing up.
So, we've finished the refining stages on the caddy, now it's time to go around with our swell seekers, with the lights off, and just make sure we haven't missed any areas. So we've given the caddy the first initial layer of desire wax. We've let it cure, we've buffed it off, and now we're gonna give it an hour or two to breathe. So while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and protect these E50s with some mint rinse. While Darren is finishing up for the last bits on the caddy, I'm gonna go ahead and install the wing mirrors and other trim bits. So the lads have been cracking on with the detail today on day two and have absolutely smashed it. With the majority of the exterior done now, it's time for us to turn our attention to the interior. But you'll probably notice there's not a lot in there yet. Reason being is the whole interior has just come back from the trimmers and we kind of rolled the dice on this one. 
You want to tidy the interior in with the exterior nicely with a whole colour combo. No, we're not going for grey. We've gone out there a little bit with this and we've gone for an orange interior all over, orange leather throughout with black satin eyelets. There's a few other satin black touches inside, so hopefully once it's in there, that interior is really gonna pop. You're gonna see it from the exterior as well as when you look in, with all that exposed paint and the tunnel and stuff, it should really work nicely. Shade, throw it to my veins. 